Use the Moivas theorem. Use the Moivas theorem. Use the Moivas theorem to express. Use the Moivas theorem to express cos raised to power six theta in terms in terms of the cosines in terms of the cosines of multiple of theta. Now here you start cos raised to power six, meaning you are going to take cos theta, then you raise it to power six. Are you seeing that? When you take cos theta and you raise to power six, meaning you must start with cos theta. What is cos theta in equivalent to? So that is what you start with, isn't it? We found out that twice cos theta is just z plus one over z. That is what we found out. Twice cos theta is z plus one over. Have you seen that? Yes. So twice cos theta is z plus one over z. So from here, we derive this from the fact where we had 2 cos n theta to be equivalent to Zn plus 1 over Zn. So it therefore implies that when n is 1, when you have your n to be 1, then it means 2 cos theta, where this n you substitute 1, is going to be Z plus 1 over Z, where this n you substitute 1. So 2 cos theta is Z plus 1 over Z. So, from here, having noted that, we need cos raised to power 6. So, for us to get cos raised to power 6, it implies what? We raise both sides of the equation to power 6, isn't it? So, we raise both sides of the equation to power, to power 6. So, when we raise both sides of the equation to power 6, the power outside is up. The power of everything is at most of the isn't it? 2 raised to power 6. 2 raised to power 6. That is time 60, 64. Okay. 2 raised to power 6 is 64. 64. So here we have 64. Then cos theta raised to power 6 is cos raised to power 6 theta. Are you seeing that? To go for Is equal to? Then what do we have this side? We have a binomial problem. A binomial? We use binomial expansion, isn't it? Yes. So when it is raised to power 6, it implies we have 7 terms, isn't it? Yes. So in the binomial expansion, we have 7? Yes. 7 terms. So you put, that is the first term, plus the second term, plus the third term, plus the fourth term, plus the fifth term, plus the sixth term, plus the seventh term. Then from there you start extracting in the first term, in the first bracket we have z, z all through. So in the first bracket we have z all through. The second bracket we have positive 1 over z. Positive 1 over z is just 1 over z, isn't it? So the second bracket is 1 over z, 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 1 over z. Then you put the coefficient. Remember our power is 6, isn't it? So the first coefficient is what? 6. Combination 0, isn't it? The second coefficient is 6, combination 1, isn't it? The third coefficient? 6, combination 2. 2. Then 6, combination 3. 6, combination 4. 6, combination 5. 6, combination 6. You place all the coefficients, then you put the power, isn't it? 1 is ascending, 1 is descending, isn't it? So if you start with z to be Ascending. A, you can start with A to ascend and descend, isn't it? So if this is starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then the other one descends. Start from 6, isn't it? 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So the next step is to simplify, isn't it? So can you now put the coefficients? Put the coefficient 6 combination 0 is what? One. 6 combination 0 is 1. 6 combination 1 six. is 6 from the calculator. 6 combination 2? 15. 6 combination 3? 20. 20. 6 combination 4? 15. 15. 
Six combination five? Six. Six. Six, six combination six? One. 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 Then we start simplifying. Anything raised to power zero is? One. Is one. So it means z raised to power zero is one, isn't it? Then one over z raised to power zero is? One. one. Then now let us simplify in the next line here. What do we remain with? We remain with 1 over z raised to power 6 and we also have z raised to power 6. So when you are simplifying, you realize that the ones which have the same coefficient, which have the, which have the, same, the, same, the same coefficient, have the same power. You, that is what you will always see. Are we together? So you can see 1 over z raised to power 6 as a coefficient of 1. Then z raised to power 6 also has a coefficient of? So you factor them together. So it means the terms with a coefficient of 1 is, is z raised to power 6 plus 1 over z raised to power? Have you seen that? Because both of them have a coefficient of 1. You can see 1, 1 over z as a coefficient. 1 over z raised to power 6 as a coefficient of 1. Remember 1 over z raised to power 6, if you bring the power inside, it is 1 over z raised to power? If you have 1 over z always to power 6, that is 1 over power 6 over z to power 6. 1 over power 6 is 1. So you remain with 1 over z to power 6. Yes. 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 So having done that, you move. The ones with the coefficient of 6 have the same power. Have you noted that? Yes. To go yes. So you can see 1 over z raised to power 5 is just re expressed like that. Yes. Then you come here again z to power 5 is just written like that. Are you see? So you now see, you put your plus the coefficient of 6, then z times 1 over z to power 5. If you simplify that, what do you remain with? So you remain with 1 over z to power 4. Because this 1z cancels with 1z, you remain with z to power 4 here. Then here again, z to power 5 times 1 over z, so you remain with z to power 4. Are you seeing that? You've seen that, isn't it? So there we have z to power 4 plus 1 over z to power, power 4. Because z, if you z to power 5 divided by z is z to power 4. Have you seen that? All of them have a coefficient of 6. So you will always realize that when the coefficient is the same, when the coefficient is the same, they will have the same power. Isn't it? Yes. I'll move on. A coefficient of 15. Check the ones with a coefficient of 15. We we'll have the same power. Are we together? Yeah. So this has a coefficient of 15. This one also has a coefficient of 15. Meaning they will have the same. So can you simplify? So plus a coefficient of 15. If you start here, z raised to power 2 times 1 over z raised to power 4. You remain with 1 over z raised to power 2, isn't it? Yeah. Then here again, z to power 4 times 1 over z to power 2. You remain with what? You remain with z to power 2 if you simplify, isn't it? Yes. So there if you simplify, you get z square plus 1 over z square. So the first case here to power 15, the first case here with a coefficient of 15, we have 1 over z square. Then here with a coefficient of 15, we have z square. So we have a coefficient of 15, we factor outside, then we put it down. z square plus 1 over z square. Have you seen that? Then the one without a, co without a component is always the constant term. If you see this coefficient like 20, are you saying 20 is only one? Yes. It doesn't have a, a component. So the one without a component is always a constant. Are we together? So 20 here does not have a component, meaning z raised to power 3, if you multiply it by 1 over z raised to power 3, you end up with 1. So you will only be with 20. Are you seeing that? So you have here plus 20. So it means the one without a component, because they are supposed to be double, 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 isn't it? One, like double, double, like z to power 6 plus 1 over z to power 6. Then we have z to power 4 plus 1 over z to power 4. Then we have z to power 2 plus 1 over z to power 2. So the ones with the same coefficients will always be double. So the one which is not having a component to double with is a constant. So that 20 you see is a constant, isn't it? Are we together? Z raised to power 3 times 1 over z raised to power 3 is 1. You are done. Then you go back to your problem. What is z raised to power 6 plus 1 over z raised to power 6? Remember, 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 this side we have 64 cos raised to power 6 theta. Remember, what did you have? 
you add to cos n theta to be Zn plus 1 over Zn, isn't it? 2 cos n theta was Zn plus 1 over Zn. Zn. So in this case, when you have Z to the power 6 plus 1 over Z to the power 6, it means n is what? It means n is 6. So if n is 6, it means it is the same as 2 cos 6 theta. Meaning where there is n, you put 6. Have you seen that? Yes. Meaning here it means z to the power 6 plus 1 over z to the power 6. Our n is 6. So if our n is 6, it means the whole of this will be what? Will be 2 cos 6 theta. Because 2 cos n theta is supposed to be zn plus 1 over zn. So our n is 6. Where there is n, we put. Have you seen that? Yes. Move on. Plus 6. Then here we have our n is 4. So we are supposed to have 2 cos n theta, isn't it? Yes. So it means we have 2 cos 4 yeah. theta. So this one is 2 cos 4 theta. Then you move again plus 15. Then here our n is 2. So we are now supposed to have 2 cos cos 2 theta. Then the last one is a 20. So what do we have this side? 64 cos raised to power 6 theta. But what do they want? They want cos raised to power 6 theta, meaning you have to get theta of the 64, isn't it? So what do you do? So you divide all through by 64. So you divide everything by 64. You divide both sides of the equation by 64. Because they only need cos raised to power 6 theta. They don't need 64 cos raised to power 6 theta. They need cos raised to power 6 theta. So you divide both sides of the equation by 64. So here they are 64 goes to 64. will remain with cos raised to power 6 theta is equal to what? 2 over 64 is? Is 1 over 32. Isn't it? So that is 1 over 32 cos 6 theta. Then plus 6 times 2 is 12, isn't it? 12 divided by 64. 12 divided by 64. 0. 0. 0.875. No, we are dealing with fractions here. 3 over 16. 3 over 16, then cos 4 theta, isn't it? Are we together? Then you move again. 15 times 2 is 30. 30 divided by 64. 15 over 32, then cos 2 theta, then plus 20 divided by 64, 5 over 16, 4 over 16, 5 over 16, isn't it? You get 5 over 16, so you see, you've expressed cos raised to power 6 theta in multiples of theta. You can see this is 6 times theta, 4 times theta, 2 times theta. Those are multiples of theta, isn't it? So that is how to, that is how to expand a function. That is how to expand a trigonometric function in multiples of theta using the De Moivre's theorem. So that is the second case of the De Moivre's theorem. To go on, yeah? That is the second case of the Moivre's theorem. That same case works with hyperbolic functions.